Hey everybody and welcome to the Katie Hansen Show. It's Kat and today we've got another special guest from the Danish wrestling scene. He's part with one half of Randers Panya. It's Xander. Hey guys, thanks for Zander, having thanks me. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. No, really excited to talk about your time um, with Body Slam. I know you're t- uh, tag teaming at the moment and just to learn more about your time with body slam and who is Xander really? Uh, Xander is, uh, is definitely an alter ego taking out of uh, all the stereotypes from the hometown I'm from. So uh, it's, it's an amazing, funny character to play, but it's also something who, who changed in a different way that body slam and myself definitely didn't think would have happened. So for those that may not be aware of that stereotype, what is that stereotype exactly? Well, the stereotype is like, in Randers, like we um, we always, you know, the, the black Adidas uh, outfit uh, the, with the khakis, and we have the cap on sideways, <laughs> and we drink. And you know, in, in Denmark, you always say like, "Do you have a Randers key?" Who's like a crowbar, so you can always get into it, even yeah. if it's not your place. <laughs> um, and we drive scooters, and yeah, we we, we just we're the the black sheep of the Danish family. <laughs> so how did that come about Cause, um like everybody would know you one of your personas as nitro green but now here you are as xander in body slam doing something so completely different how have you found adjusting to that well to me it became a lot of easy because i had a tag team partner uh who's my cousin in real life yeah and one of my best mates uh, so I, when you have like when you go out and you have this party music and you're doing the dapping and you're doing everything, <laughs> it's so much easier to relax when you have a guy who's doing it right next to you. Yeah. Um, and he has been gone for a year, so that has been the biggest challenge. I had to find myself comfortable doing it without him. Him being back now, you know, you just take the volume and you turn so much more up. Yeah. And you can do so much more with it. Um, and then. It's supposed. It was supposed to be a heel tag team. We were supposed to be the the dicks that people didn't like, but now you have two young guys who just come out and we're not doing anything. We're not supposed to. We're just happy and we jump around so people automatically start to cheer. So, yeah. So that yeah, it's, everybody it's, likes to party. And it, it, and that's what this like. And we we we're not doing anything who's outrageous. We're not being rude to girls. We we're flirty and we are. Oh, we're so good. Ha ha ha. Look at us. And then people are like, I like the swagger, I like the confident. Yeah, oh, I'll buy into that. Hey, <laughs> so, so it's, it's a fun, it's just fun and games. How did you find adjusting to that character then? It was different because the Nitro Green character is 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 so far away from who I am, and it's yeah. so it's it's kind of taking a life of its own. Where I did the Rio Blanco gimmick for a short period uh, for Body Slam, uh, and they they approached me of how I would feel taking off my mask and, and be without a mask. And yeah. I was like, I've always wanted that. I because like I started the mask as Nitro Green for different stories, and I've I've always been told like this is where you make your money in wrestling, and with the mask that has its limitations. Yeah. So I had to change up a little bit. I had to make sure that the way I sell is different and my moveset has to change. But besides that, I kind of just, they came with some ideas of what they wanted. Uh, we took it and we kind of was told, run with it. Yeah. And there's no limits, just do what you want to do. And then from that, like, it's just kind of from show to show, from promo to promo, from everything we do, we've just become more and more comfortable with this character. How has your fans taken to this? So they've been so cons- accustomed to Nitro Green and here you are. Um, you had the Real Blanco where you're still wearing a mask, but here you are as Xander, showing everybody essentially who you are, who the true form is. Like, how's fans taken to that? 
Well, we never officially on any pages made, said that Nitro Green is also Sander. Like, that's never been done. Uh, obviously, I am not that easy to disguise with the... Not many Danes has a panda tattooed on their arm. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm very obvious, like I'm not good in disguise. Yeah. Um, but it's, I only wrestle as Sander for Body Slam. I've never done that in dance pro wrestling. Uh, and it's two different fan bases. Yeah. So at the beginning where we didn't have uh, the Randers Payne fan page, people would text uh, like occasionally the Nitro Green say, oh, it's good to see you, and I like this gimmick, it's different, it's fun. Uh, but besides that, I think people like, because it's such a different character and it has no simulations to Nitro Green, yeah. that people are like, oh, this is cool, this is different, so it's not him. It must be another guy. Yeah. Do you feel like you've, um, like the stories you may get put in uh, a lot different because there's more you can tell um, without the mask? It's it's a different story telling, definitely, because Nitro Green doesn't really speak that much when he's in the ring. And he's a very, uh, he was supposed to be a, a non speaking character when we started all of this. So now, obviously, with more words, and also Nitro Green was supposed to be a swamp monster back when we started it. Yeah. And, and Sa- Sander is supposedly not a drunk. But he he's he's intoxicated and he's feeling the the vibe of the music and 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 it's kind of like when you like when you flirt and when you're going out on towns and stuff like that you feel more confident and that's who Sander is playing and when you feel confident you kind of have the courage to say more and do more and that's kind of what the character is doing. What about your ring style? Has have you changed any of you like your move set? Is your move set different? I've taken. I've taken the, the Nitro Green moveset and I, I've, I've tweaked it to make it more of a, an upper-rised yeah. moveset when Nitro is doing most of his stuff in flips and from the ground, uh, where Sandra is, is mostly standing and still do... I'm, I'm more based now where Nitro does a lot of jumps. Yeah. Uh, also, once again, with a tag team partner where I'm the bigger guy in the tag team, it doesn't fit me doing it. I have him doing all the flips and I'll I'll do the heavier lifting. Yeah. Do you sometimes get carried away? When you do like in a match or Yeah, so like obviously you've got your two different styles, but then sometimes I'm sure the the moments there and you're just like, I just want to go dive, but you're like, nope, I I'm not doing that. That's Yeah, yeah, that that happens. But then like once again, like it's 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 a very free character. Uh, so, so, like tag teams is, it it, it kind of get, gets that itch. Like when my partner's doing the dive, I'm like, oh, but oh, we could do a double dive instead. It's like, no, I'll do the dive. Like, fine. But you know that that's kind of why it's good to have a tag team partner because he, he can like, kind of control you and within the limits of what fits the match instead of you just running wild. Wild. Yeah. So obviously with Xander being somewhat that party boy and um what can like what can people expect from like Body Slam if they've not seen Body Slam before, like what, well, what body is Body Slam? Slam? Body Slam once again has so many different characters. You know, I know you, you talk to Peter or Xander, who is this very slow talking, slow walking, very controlled, I know what I'm doing all the time and I just want to listen to me or you have the Randers pain who's like, we go with the beat of the flow and we, f- we feel what the audience is giving to us. And from, you have these two major differences and then, then the rest of the card, you have everything in between. So body slam is to me is definitely the perfect match of what a wrestling promotion should be because they're really good at promoting. They're really good at making amazing video packages and guys also have the freedom to like, this is what I want to do. Are you okay? They say, oh, give it, we give it five shows. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we figure out something else. Yeah. So, so, so you can expect <laughs> a little bit of everything from Body Slam. You've had many singles matches. You've had many tag matches. Um, what are the contrasts? Like, do you, do you prefer a specific style? Do you prefer singles or tag? Or 
It, it, it varies so, so much because, like, there's more you can do more in a tag team because it opens like more set of hands and it just opens up a completely different maneuvers you can do but also in a tag team it also limits what you as a guy does in yeah. that full match uh, for the gimmick of, of Sander I prefer being a tag team just because that's what kind of what I feel where he belongs yeah yeah um, on a personal level, I'm, I'm probably most into doing my singles matches because that's where I feel like I'm in control. Because yeah. like when you do a tag team, there's two more guys in the match who obviously makes it more complex and therefore more mistakes could be made. Yeah. So what was that first match like when you're finally wrestling without your mask? <laughs> Did you feel like naked? I, I felt to a certain extent. I felt naked, and also because like we were, we were in a, a body slam was in a town they had never been in before, so no one really knew what to expect. And we had this weird, weird entrance song we still use to this day, and, and it's great. I couldn't imagine doing it without it. But like they gave us that song on the day, and I was like, "What am I? What am I supposed to do with this?" And they were like, "We'll just be wild and wacky," and I was like. With this, and then we walked out, and and my tag team partner came out, and he was he was feeling it to an, an out believing. So I was like, if if this is what it is without mask, no, no, I want my mask back on. Um, but but once again, it just just the way people react to your facial expressions is yeah. so much different. I can see the 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 benefits of if you're new and you need to like to to just like to feel more hidden from the audience a mask is good but you also like Rey Mysterio like if you see how his mask has opened up more and more over the years because you need to see at least the eyes and the mouth just tv shots and whatever you're doing yeah definitely so how long did it take until you started feeling more at home and more comfortable not wearing a mask surprisingly it went very fast i think within a five or six matches with without it uh and i'm i'm 100 percent sure that it it goes back to having my tag team partner and my cousin my, my good friend that we we were there together you were never alone yeah um and then like when you're in it eventually you're just forgetting you don't have the mask on because like i've always trained to wrestle without a mask so I always sell up with my face and I always make sure that the crowd could see the mask. So now you take the mask off, you do the same thing. It's, um, it's just, you just have to be aware of there's small things you can't do when you don't have the mask on. Yeah. So when, like, say if these other companies looking to um, book yourself, do you want it as Nitro Green or do you want to be Xandamore? That's, that's, I always, um, when, when I reach out to different promotions, I say, this is the two gimmicks I can do. If you have one of those who fits your show. Um, I like the Nitro Green character cause that's my own. And that yeah. was something that I completely uh, invented. However, right now I'm very much in love with the Sander gimmick cause it's, it's something that I was given and then I created it out of what I was given. And, um, I think. I think Sander is something completely new, and the Randers pain um, pain is completely new. Yeah. So, gimmick wise, I think Nitro Green is easier because there's so much to it. Um, but booking wise, on an international scale, I think Nitro Green is hard because, like Randers uh, pain, you can always use as like in Denmark, we're from this town and we're the cocky guys. If you go abroad. We're from Denmark and we're cocky. Yeah. It's the same if you take Zach Gibson. Like he always told me, his gimmick works everywhere. Cause like in England, he's Liverpool's number one, and he's and you hate him. Yeah. But when he goes to US, he's England's number one. Like they all know what football is. Yeah. So maybe they don't know Liverpool, but he comes out in a jer- in a jersey. They hate him because it's not their local team. Yeah, definitely. So. 
like when you're you mentioned you started off as the tag team and then you had to do some solos for around a year and now you're back as a tag team so when when you think of like your singles run um with body slam like what are some of your favorite ones i know you was in the scandy graps invitational tournament and um you'd faced peter alessander you'd faced pete phoenix and then you'd got to the final against emeritus um are they some of your like more like the ones that you look back fondly on uh Peter Alexander, not the match from the the Scandic graphics because that that was a, that was a roll up and then the match was done. <laughs> uh, but Peter Alexander, I I have had some very fun matches with. Um, Emeritus as well, a good a, a very good wrestler. Uh, once, but I think in Body Slam, who I've had the best chemistry with is definitely Peter, and I he right now he's the the Body Slam heavyweight champ, uh, and definitely something that I. On hindsight and in long term, has a set on being. I want to be. I want to be the best that I can possibly be. And I be, now hopefully here, they have a show on November fourteenth where we are challenging for the, the, the Body Slam Tag Team Titles. Hopefully, when that is a finished chapter in my book, I can go back and, and challenge Peter for, for the title. Yeah. So that match is that against Tank and Michael Finn. Michael Finn and Tank, yes. Yeah, brilliant. So have you been in the ring with those before? Tank was actually one of the first trainers I had. Um, I wrestled Michael Finn on small, small house shows yeah. in Denmark. Never had uh, an official match with either of them, no. So, so, uh, so that's to. definitely, and it, the dynamic of that is so different because like me and, and Adonis is such a well-oiled machine because like we've been tagging for so many years we tag before Ranos Pena as well where Tank and Finna is kind of two very popular guys who got put together yeah. as one duo and just I, I'm looking forward to see how that chemistry is going to work because because we we have a very different moveset who's structured together where they have a lot of single moves so that's going to be uh, going to be fun Oh, brilliant. So are you hoping um, as a tag team you may get more work around um, Scandinavia or like Europe? That's, uh, I think once again, like with the gimmick, it's something that you could easily take outside of, of the borders of Denmark. So that's definitely something that uh, that I would love to do. I know Adonis is very busy with other stuff as well. So it's harder for him to uh, schedule around yeah. that. But if, if opportunities would open... Definitely something that I would love on a personal level to take outside of that market. Brilliant. So in terms of body slam, like you mentioned uh, Peter and wanting that body slam championship. Is there anybody else that you're wanting to wrestle where you may have faced them before? Um, you might not have faced them, but you want to wrestle them in a body slam ring. I go toe to toe with Harley Rage again. He's a Swedish, very big guy, uh, very, very talented. Outside of that, Michael Finn, I would love to take him on in a singles match and, and Tank as well, because like big, good guys. Um, who else in Body Slam who I would love to? Uh, they're fairly new. Uh, they, the tag team is called Easy Lovers. Yeah. Um, there's a big guy. His name is uh, Bam Bam. I don't know why. And like he's so, he's so big and the way he moves, it shouldn't be possible. <laughs> like, he like he just moves like a freaking cat. I I, I just saw him uh, in a tag team match in uh, Odense here a couple of days ago, and just like he he was sent into a buckle and he kind of like spin in through it. And I was like, dude, you you weigh fifteen kilos more than I. You shouldn't be able to do that. And like <laughs> just his gimmick. I think we could do something very fun with him. No, that's definitely. And I keep hearing quite a lot about the easy lovers um, as. Like the new kids on the block, essentially, um, in Body Slam. So, yeah. Um, when again, when's that tag team title match again? Uh, November 14th in Copenhagen. November 14th. So, um, seems like it's going to be a big month for you, especially in November, um, both as Nitro Green and Xander. And um, again, for those of you that are listening to this one, if you've not listened to it already, make sure you go into the archives, whether you listen to them on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere else that you're finding this podcast, and listen to the Nitro Green to find out how Xander 
became a professional wrestler. We talk about his career um, away under that mask. So make sure you do check that one out. But um, Xander, it's been great to learn more about yourself and the person under the mask um, and learning more about that gimmick. So where can people find you on social media? Well, just like, as I said, with the with the Nitro Green, we have a, a fan page, uh, Ranos Peña, where you're more than welcome to add and subscribe. We'll always add that and have that open with the uh, new content, the what goes on and where we are. Uh, we don't have an Instagram because uh, we actually chose not to do that at the beginning because we didn't think it was going to be as popular as it now has spiraled yeah. into be. And once again, that's something that we work on. So right now, the only place you can find is Sandra and Adonis is on Facebook under Anas Peña. Brilliant. So make sure you go follow them. Make sure you go follow Body Slam. Where can they check out your work at Body Slam? Well, Body Slam is very good at always do their YouTube channel. So make sure to go at Body Slam Pro Wrestling on YouTube. And then they always, on their own Facebook page, Body Slam Pro Wrestling, put in links and add where we've been and, and Good, good highlight clips. Oh, fantastic. So make sure you go follow them. Make sure you go check out Body Slam as well. And make sure you have a look at all the future interviews. If you've not already listened to it, um, I spoke to the champ, Peter Alessander. Um, make sure you check out um, my chat with Xander, but Nitro Green. And again, I will be speaking to Christian, the owner of Body Slam. Um, that may be out by the time you're listening to this one. It may not be. If it isn't, make sure you hit subscribe so you're not going to miss that chat. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you hit like and again, go follow Xander and Randers Pena on Facebook. And again, Xander, thank you for coming on the show. Once again, thanks for having me. Brilliant. So yeah, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. I've been Kate Johansson. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Friday morning.